Hey guys, welcome to Hippie's History. We're banging out the 1804 presidential election. Thomas Jefferson's going for a two-peat, and he's gonna do it big time. The biggest blowout in American history in a contested presidential election. So let's turn back the hands of time and giddy up for the learning and take a look right now. So the anti-feds, we're going to call them the Democratic Republicans because that's their political party name. Now, Thomas Jefferson, of course, is from Virginia, but he's very popular throughout the country, not only because of the Louisiana Purchase, but taxes are down and the debt is much lower, having paid off much of the American revolutionary debt that was owed. He's also really kind of given a break by a break in the European wars. The French Revolutionary Wars kind of effect in Europe has died down and trade is booming, which means the economy is booming. So he's gonna go uncontested. Now, there is a little bit of a problem with his vice president, Aaron Burr. Um, not only is he not really getting along with Thomas Jefferson, but he seemed to shoot Alexander Hamilton dead in July of 1804. So he's gonna be pushed off the ticket and we're gonna get George Clinton, who's the governor of New York, to be the vice presidential nominee. And Jefferson and Clinton are gonna really run away with it. Now, the Federalists, they're kind of in a negative situation because everything's going so well in the country. They're gonna nominate Charles C. Pickney, and he is the governor of South Carolina. He's kind of a, an aristocrat, he's pro-slavery. He is, in a sense, kind of a weird Federalist being from the South, but he believes that we have to kind of tie relationships with Great Britain in even a stronger way. And he really believes that Jefferson is too much of a radical. He calls him a Jacobian. Is that how you pronounce it, Jacobian? You know what I mean, those French guys that cut off all the heads. And he's gonna choose as his vice presidential nominee, Rufus King, who is a former US Senator from New York. So he's going for that Northern sector. And Rufus King was involved in Jay's treaty, has very close ties with Great Britain, so they thought that that was a powerful combination, but it's not gonna be one. So let's take a look at the actual election itself, and we're gonna do that right now. So in 1804, there are 176 electoral votes that are up for grabs in the election. We have a population of about 6 million and we have 17 states, although only 11 of the 17 states actually have popular votes for the presidential election. And Jefferson's just going to kick Royal Heine. He's going to win 15 of the 17 states. In fact, uh, Charles Pickney only picks up Delaware and Connecticut. And of course, these are kind of two manufactured states that are in the Northeast. And there is a little trepidatious this in the Northeast about this Louisiana purchase because the port of New Orleans is going to be competition for the ports in the Northeast, but really it's just a complete blowout. It's more than 45 percentage points, and that is without a doubt in a contested election, the biggest blowout in American history. In terms of the Electoral College, it's 162 electoral votes for Jefferson and the Democratic Republicans. The Federalists are only gonna pick up 14 electoral votes. There's a couple other kind of big first in this presidential election. It's really the only time that a vice president has succeeded himself into the presidency for a two-term office. Now, there is one other individual who served as vice president and did go on to serve two terms. We're gonna give you a little bit of time to figure out the answer. Did you figure it out? That's right, guys, it's Richard Nixon, who was Eisenhower's vice president in the 1950s, loses in 1960, goes on to win in 68 and 72. You should go watch those presidential election videos as well. But at the end of the day, why is it such a trouncing? Like we said it before, Louisiana Purchase, we have a booming economy, and we have friendly relations with Great Britain and France, which is just gonna help the economy even more. So we have another Virginian in the office. This is four times we have a Virginian. Guess who's coming next? Next, another Virginian in James Madison, but we're gonna wrap it up right now, guys. We hope you understand a little bit about the election of 1804. Go check out the presidential election list down below and check out Hip Hughes History. If you haven't subscribed, we have over 350 videos. So I'm gonna say it like I say it in all of my videos where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time that you press me buttons.